Hello everybody, welcome to Euro Channel. Let's get to the point right away. Is there any reliable evidence for supplements and herbs to help with erectile dysfunction? Yes, there is. In this video, I'm reporting to you what evidence we have to justify the use of L-arginine and pycnogenol in mild to moderate cases of erectile dysfunction. <laughs> My name is Stefan Buntrock, I'm a urologist and sexologist. One of the complex functions of the body are erections. It needs a coordinated concerto of muscles, nerves, chemicals, hormones and the psyche in order to bring them about. This is why good erections are a sign of good general health. In the aging process, many functions of the body decline. Bad lifestyle habits accelerate this process. Diseases kick in and very often decrease erectile ability, not to mention certain medication, which are harmful to erections. So in the second half of life, erectile function has already suffered in many. PDE5 inhibitors like Viagra and Cialis are very effective in restoring erectile function, but there is a widespread fear of possible side effects. Herbal and supplemental alternatives are very popular and a big business. The question is, are they effective? And if so, what action can be expected? Personally, I think most of that stuff is a waste of money, especially herbs from these charlatan herbal doctors with the funny names who try to spam my comment sections and claim to eliminate everything, not only erectile function, but also herpes, cancer, and all adversities in life, including bad mothers-in-law. But looking at the data of L-arginine and pycnogenol, they might be something to consider in certain circumstances. To understand what the amino acid L-arginine and the plant extract pycnogenol can do for you in terms of better erections, it is important to understand how erections normally come about. It all centers around a gas. This gas is called nitric oxide and is released from nerve endings and endothelial cells within the penis. Nitric oxide triggers a cascade of reactions that lead to smooth muscle relaxation and eventually erection. In the endothelial cells, nitric oxide is produced from L-arginine, which is an amino acid. So it makes perfect sense to increase L-arginine levels by supplementation in order to raise the level of substrate for NO production. L-arginine is often combined with a plant extract from the bark of French maritime pine called pycnogenol. It contains a number of phenolic substances, so-called flavonoids, with antioxidant capabilities. So there is a benefit for the cardiovascular system. Pycnogenol also stimulates endothelial nitric oxide synthase to produce more nitric oxide. This means that in combination, the endothelial cells are flooded with the substrate L-arginine and at the same time, the capacity for NO production is increased. And as you remember, more nitric oxide means better erections. So far for theory. But does it work in practice? There is good reason to believe that the answer is yes. However, there's a very limited number of studies on the subject, only small numbers of patients and rather short-term follow-up. That makes it difficult to generalize the findings. But study design was of high quality and the results were impressive. In one of the studies I found, 50 subjects with mild to moderate erectile dysfunction received a formulation named Prelox, which contains L-arginine and pycnogenol in a double-blind crossover design. This design is good for eliminating any placebo effects. So they randomly assigned the participants to two groups. Group A received Prelox, group B received placebo tablets. Neither the participants nor the staff who gave out the medication knew what the respective tablets contained. After four weeks, they stopped for four weeks to wash out the medication and then swapped groups. Now it was group B who was put on Prelox. Again, nobody knew what they were receiving. Erectile function was assessed by International Index of Erectile Function Scores, the IIEF. The result was that the previously lowered IIEF scores normalized in the prelox groups. First in group A while receiving prelox and group B showing reduced scores, then in group B while on prelox and group A showing reduced scores under placebo. Another study in 124 subjects with mild to moderate ED yielded comparable results with prelox. They used a simple double-blind 
placebo-controlled design without the crossover part. But the study period was much longer, six months instead of four weeks. Again, the IIEF scores normalized in the prelux group with a significant difference to the placebo group. Additionally, the frequency of sexual intercourse doubled. So these are encouraging results. But keep in mind, this was a special group of men. They went through a very thorough examination first and only those were included who were more or less healthy otherwise. That means no blood pressure issues, no medication, no elevated body weight, infections, hormonal issues, anatomical problems, psychiatric disorders, etc. They were also fairly young, 30 to 50 years of age. And as I explained, they were suffering from only mild to moderate ED. So it not only remains unknown whether prelogs would be effective in severe ED too, but also it is unclear how it would work in a real life setting. Because as I said, that was a carefully chosen study group. Most men with ED would not fulfill the criteria to be included into a study like that. So the question is, if it doesn't work on its own, would it enhance the efficacy of PDA5 inhibitors? This might be important in severe ED, where PD5 inhibitors no longer work or are less effective. There are two studies with sildenafil, vardenafil and L-arginine alone that produced a small yet statistically significant difference in favor of the combination. Another thing is duration of the treatment. Most probably it will be long term, also considering the benefits of pycnogenol, but no definite recommendations can be made based on the research at hand. What about side effects? No severe side effects are reported. The manufacturer states that slight headaches and flushes might occur in the beginning, but will resolve within short. Frankly, I'm not sure whether these go back to L-arginine or pycnogenol. Maybe it is the taurin they blend into the formulation. That's the stuff they add into energy drinks. I don't see how this will benefit the drug, especially since we are talking continuous medication over months, maybe even years, and not on demand like PD-5 inhibitors. It doesn't make sense to me. However, apart from that, all interventions targeted towards treatment of erectile dysfunction should be accompanied by lifestyle interventions. This means stay away from saturated fats, eat lots of vegetables and only little meat, don't overeat and normalize your body weight. Apart from the physiological changes, you will feel more attractive and thus also become more attractive to others. Don't smoke. Smoking causes ED through several mechanisms. Exercise regularly, which means more or less every day with a program that contains both cardiovascular and strength training exercises. Another thing is medication. Certain drugs might compromise erectile function. Talk to your doctor whether a change to another drug is possible like using the beta blocker nebivolol instead of metoprolol, as nebivolol is much less detrimental to erections. If you want to know what to do for physical exercise, have a look at this video. I also have a playlist of videos for guys over 50 with exercises for the pelvic floor and other stuff. Check it out. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. <laughs>